I don't see it coming up. Okay, Danielle, we're ready to go. All right, thanks, Leanne. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining us this morning. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Danielle Olson, and I am a Microsoft Learning Consultant based in Houston, Texas, actually Katy, Texas, um, where it's nice and sunny today. Thankfully, we are very thankful for that because it's been a little bit dreary the last couple of days. Um, I was a, an educator, am still an educator, but was in the classroom for 14 years as a high school English teacher and also a professional development coordinator, specialist, um, and just all around supporter of teachers um, in the district that I worked in and then now in the districts that I work with. So today um, we are going to look at PowerPoint Live. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And when I demo PowerPoint Live, I really like to um, I like to also give like some little tips and tricks or little tidbits that you might not know about. Um, Sorry, give me just a second that you might not know about PowerPoint itself or the, you know, some of the things that PowerPoint can do. And um, so we'll go like I'll kind of sprinkle those throughout as we're doing the presentation. But just as a reminder, um, if you need closed captioning for the webinar, we do offer that, I think, only in English at this point um, at this moment in time. But we are looking to add additional um, languages in the future, but you can go up to the ellipses. If you're in the desktop version of Teams, you can go to the ellipses, which are those three dots, click on those, um, and then select turn on live captions. And then if you are in the web browser, your menu is going to open up below, um, um, right below your initials or right in the middle of the screen. And you can again, click those ellipses and choose uh, turn on live captions. All right, and we um, have the chat as well inside of the meeting so if you do have any questions at all or comments suggestions etc please do not hesitate to pop those into the chat i do have the chat open on my other monitor and um you know i can pop in and out of that to answer questions or even you know answer them live as we're going through the, the presentation all right so we are going to talk about powerpoint live and powerpoint live gives opportunities for you to um, interact with students while you are delivering a PowerPoint. <clears throat> so um, when you start a PowerPoint Live, and I'm going to show you how to do that, when you start that uh, QR code, students can scan that QR code, um, participants can scan that QR code, they can type in um, a URL, they can give reactions to different um, things that are happening in the PowerPoint itself. They can choose the language that they want to see the transcription in. Um, and it just makes for a more interactive presentation. So during today's presentation, these are the things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how to access PowerPoint through office.com. We're going to talk about how to get started with PowerPoint Live. Um, and then we're going to look at how your audience can join some of those features and I'll answer any questions that you might have. And we're going to do all of this in PowerPoint Live. So, so um, we are going over PowerPoint Live as a PowerPoint Live presentation. So PowerPoint Live can only be accessed in the browser. So you have to use PowerPoint online in order to access um, in order to create a PowerPoint Live presentation. So I'm going to show you how to do that and then we will get started. So when you um, go to slideshow in PowerPoint online, you're going to see a couple of options here. You've got present live, you've got rehearse with coach, and then I here's one of the things I love to point out about PowerPoint that a lot of people don't know just yet, but PowerPoint allows you to deliver your presentation in with subtitles. So you as the presenter choose your spoken language and you can see here that there are, um, you know, several languages that are generally available. And then we've got some preview languages here as well. So you choose the language that you're speaking in and then you can choose the subtitle language for 
your presentation. So if you are presenting to a group of students and maybe that group of students um, are mostly Spanish speakers or are more comfortable in um, you know, reading in Spanish or learning in Spanish, then you can choose Spanish as your closed captioning or your subtitle language. And as you are delivering your PowerPoint, your subtitles will show up in Spanish. This uh, feature is available both on Power in PowerPoint online and also native in the PowerPoint desktop application. So it allows for that inclusivity um, and accessibility for our students who are um, speakers of other languages. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and and switch to PowerPoint Live, and I am encouraging you all to join me um, in this presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present live, but first I want to make sure that I set my audience to anyone so that you all do not have to log in in order to join the presentation. So um, I'm going to click anyone, and then I am going to select present live. And again, we're going to go over all of these steps together um, once I, you know, once you guys have an opportunity to join in the presentation. All right. So to join the presentation, what you're going to do is you are going to scan this QR code. So if you are on a mobile device, you can scan this QR code or and I'll put that the um, address, the URL in our chat. But it's pptms slash k w p n r u e k and i see some people coming in that's awesome and i did just drop the link into our chat so if you want to copy and paste that link awesome and you can see here that um how many people have joined the presentation This is great. Danielle, while everybody is joining, I also wondered um, if this could be used perhaps in an IEP meeting or a meeting like that where you would have families who do not speak English. Yes, ma'am. Yes. If you, I don't know, Libby, I don't know if you joined the um, PowerPoint or not, but when you join, you can choose your language. I'm on there. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Fabulous. So if when you know when you joined, notice that you you know you chose English, if that's your you know language of choice. But you, I think there's like nine languages that you can choose from as well. So it would be an excellent, um, an excellent vehicle for presenting during an IEP meeting. Absolutely. All right, so we will um, now talk about how to get into PowerPoint from office.com and then we'll go over the steps for creating a PowerPoint Live. If you missed out on the link, you can always see the link here at the top of the PowerPoint page so um, or presentation. So if you are using PowerPoint Live in a Teams meeting. Student joins meeting late, parent joins the meeting late, no big deal. They are able to see that link to the presentation at the top of the screen, and then they are able to go to a browser and type in that URL and immediately join the presentation. So the screenshot that's on the screen now is from office.com. Um, it looks a little bit different. Office.com looks a little bit different right now, but the, um, the steps are the same. You'll want to either open your PowerPoint application from your Office, land, Office 365 landing page, or you can go to your OneDrive and search for that PowerPoint presentation from your OneDrive and then um, open it in the browser from OneDrive. But either way, you choose to get to the PowerPoint presentation, you do need to use PowerPoint online in order to have a live 
session. And then as you saw me uh, do a few minutes ago, when I want to begin my PowerPoint Live presentation, I'm going to click on the slideshow ribbon inside of PowerPoint Online, and then I'm going to select the present live button here. And I want to make sure that um, that I give the right permission for who can join this PowerPoint presentation. So when I choose people, only people in my organization, what that does is it requires those who are going to view the PowerPoint presentation to be logged into whatever their Office 365 domain is. So um, here in the Houston area, it's HoustonISD.org or FortBend.com or you know CFISD.net. So it would be you know whatever your email address is before and then your domain after, or else you won't be able to access the PowerPoint Live. If you set the PowerPoint Live to anyone in your anyone in the world, um, like I did when I started this presentation, um, that means that anyone who is anyone and has the link is going to be able to join my presentation. So to use Libby's example of, um, you know, for an IEP, you would choose anyone for your permissions and then anyone, the parents, um, maybe some community members or support personnel who might be outside of the district are going to be able to join and see the PowerPoint Live presentation. Um, and then once you've chosen those permissions, you're going to go ahead and launch PowerPoint Live, which again, um, we did a few minutes ago. It's very easily easily accessible, both on a mobile device and on a, a laptop or um, a, an iPad. So you simply scan that QR code if that if you are on a mobile device, or you can navigate to a browser and put the URL into your address bar. And then. From there, you know, once you've scanned that QR code or you've put the link in, you are able to choose your language subtitles. Um, I was wrong. I thought it was just nine languages, but you can see here that you've got 60 languages to choose from. And that um, list is growing on a, a daily, a monthly basis. So more and more languages are being added but you choose the language that you would like to see your subtitles in, which again allows for that um, inclusivity and that ease of accessibility. You'll see that transcribed in real time in the language of your choice. You also are able to go back in the presentation to view slides that have been delivered previously. So if I happen to join the presentation late, I can go back and review the slides, you know, at, on my own to see what I might have missed. And then I can come back to the slide that the presenter is currently presenting and I'm able to, um, to you know, rejoin the meeting and know what came before. You are not able to go ahead in a PowerPoint Live, which you know is a nice feature as a teacher, as an educator, um, you know a lot of times my students would want to move ahead, um, thinking that all I was delivering was you know what was on the the PowerPoint slide. So it is nice that um, there is that ability to keep those who are attending your presentation. Um, confined, if you will, to what is currently being presented or what has been presented so they can go back and review. You also can give live feedback, um, and this is one of my favorite features, to be honest, both inside of Teams, but also, you know, here in PowerPoint Live, and y'all can give it a try at, at any time, but you can give a thumbs up, you can give um, a heart, you can clap, you can um, give a smiley face. So it is a nice uh, way to kind of take a temperature check of the room. Um, I'm trying to join on my phone so I can show y'all like the, the reactions. So you can see the, um, 
the smiles are coming up. Um, you know, maybe you have a, like a, a face with really no reaction, um, a heart. And this is, you know, again, a great way to get kind of like that temperature check on the room. Like, how is everybody doing? But it's also a way to like see if you if it's time for you to move forward, if students are ready for you to move forward. Um, if you, you know, if you are asking thumbs up or um, clap, if you are ready to move on or, you know, straight face, if you need to have a little bit more. And um, so it just gives opportunity for that. And then also um, as a, a participant, I can grab those slides and I can zoom in and I can rotate them um, and, and interact with the slides in a way that I can't when I'm watching someone present it. So if, if the writing is too small, I can zoom in so I can see it a little bit better. Or if there's a, um, a graphic that I can't see or I want to, you know, kind of zoom in on that, I can do that while uh, watching the presentation. All right. And as a presenter, here are the features that I have um, available to me. And you can see them here on the screen. So I know that my microphone is on and I can turn that on or off. I can move forward or back through my slides. I can also grab a slide sorter view as well. If I want to draw on slides, um, I can do that. That's not going to carry through to you all. Um, except that you're, you know, watching this presentation, me deliver it by sharing my screen. Um, but if you needed to make notes, you would be able to see those. I can um, turn my captions on or off. And those are the ones that you're seeing on the bottom of my screen right now. Um, and then I've got some live options here. So I can uh, copy that link to paste the link to join live. I can copy that, paste it into the meeting chat if I need to. I can show the welcome screen again. And if I want to, I can turn um, reactions on and off as well. Um, so I'm going to pause there and just uh, get some feedback and you can either pop it in the chat or you can come off of mute or you can add a reaction. But just to get a sense how many of you would be um, are jazzed up about PowerPoint Live and are thinking of ways that you might could use it um, in your role. I think they're trying to figure out maybe how um, it would apply in a virtual speech therapy session. Like if you had a group, I was thinking perhaps I mean, can that can the participants be heard at all in live? Um, if they're in a team's meeting, if they come off of mute, they could be. Yes. So if if they if you had a slide that had uh, a picture of the words that they were working on, then then they could take turns saying those words and perhaps the other students could provide hearts or thumbs if if the production was correct i love it yes that is an awesome idea i'm thinking you could also perhaps use it in some sort of language um, lesson perhaps um, anybody else have any ideas <laughs> i love the translation though particularly for iep meetings because we do have um, therapists who are trying to hold a meeting um, with families that don't speak english and uh, sometimes you can't get translators and all that kind of thing so that might really work would there be a way to show the screen within the powerpoint so that that you could show pages of the iep um i think you could take screenshots of the iep and drop them into powerpoint slides okay and you can also change the size of a PowerPoint slide. So if you know IEPs are usually like eight and a half by 11, right? Like a regular piece of paper, um, you can 
changed your PowerPoint slide size to that eight and a half by 11. And then you could take that, you know, screenshot of the IEP or the pages of the IEP and drop those into the different, uh, into different slides and then present live. So parents could access in their language, but could also see the, the IEP itself. Um, I can also show you some of the translation options um, in Word that might be helpful as well. I know how difficult it is. I remember in my classroom how difficult it was to, to get a translator, um, but we do have several tools built into Office 365 that can be very helpful for that those translation needs. Um, all right, so after your presentation is completed, once you've ended the presentation, you will get an email um, that gives you feedback from the presentation. So the, the audience, once the presentation ends, the audience gets a feedback form. They give you a score. And it's, you know, and they give it's a Likert scale of one to five. And then they can add additional comments as well. And then you as the presenter get all of that in one email and you get, you know, your presentation score, the details, and the, then your reactions and, um, and your top slides. And then Vicki says, can we use this to allow the speaker to present via sign language and they would be able to see? Um, so, Vicki, the answer is yes. You can use the spotlight um, view. So, ellipses. I'm sorry, participants. And then you choose the participant and you click on those three dots and you spotlight them. We also, um, coming very soon, very soon, um, there's going to be some new views in uh, in meetings in Microsoft Teams, and one of them is going to be the ability to like you're on the screen and your presentation is behind you, kind of like a news reporter in a way. So that view is coming very soon, and you could use a um, a sign language um, interpreter in that view as well. It hasn't rolled out just yet, but it it's rolling out very soon. Um, all right, so we are at the end of PowerPoint Live. See, I told you guys there wasn't going to be anything too brain heavy. <laughs> uh, it's pretty. Uh, the steps are pretty clear, and um, it's easy to join. I think as a, a as an attendee. And um, then we just move on from, uh, you know, at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and end the presentation. And escape out. And you all should have received, if you were watching the session, you should have gotten um, a feedback. and ask for feedback. And then you'll fill that out and I will show you exactly what that looks like because I will likely get that email while we're still in the middle of this presentation. So I can show you exactly what that looks like. Okay, before I move to um, the, I have another tool. So before I move to that, I wanna pause see if there are any questions um, and do a little check in and see if you guys are open <laughs> to one more awesome tool within PowerPoint. Do you want them to respond in the chat? Like, yes, yes, they would like it. Yes, or you can respond with your reactions. You guys have reactions in Teams meetings? Great. Perfect. 
Yay! There's those reactions. I love it. That is awesome. Great. Okay. So, you guys, I think you're really going to like this. And you know what? I'm going to say you guys while I do this. And, and um, the coach is going to tell me not to say you guys because it, I'm not talking to all guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so I am going to show you uh, Rehearse with Coach. So inside of PowerPoint online, and again, you have to use online for this, but there is the opportunity to rehearse your PowerPoint presentation with a coach. And as speech and language pathologists, I think you guys are going, y'all are going to love this, especially with your, um, your students who may be more advanced um, and more comfortable speaking, but this gives students and even adults the opportunity to practice a presentation before they deliver it. Um, so if I were still in the classroom and my students were going to deliver a presentation, I would ask, have asked them to make sure that they used Rehearse with Coach before they, came to deliver that presentation to the entire class, just to make sure that they had rehearsed and were ready to go. So this lives here inside of PowerPoint online. So you go to slideshow and rehearse with coach. And brand new as well to this is the ability to show body language feedback as well. So if you were rehearsing and had your camera on, then you would be able to get feedback on how, what your body was saying while you were presenting your presentation. So for those of us who um, are back in the classroom and maybe have students who are presenting, this is a nice feature as well for, you know, getting a sense of how you should stand when you're delivering a presentation or um, sit or look, you know, not, not look away, that kind of thing. Um, so I'll show you how what that looks like, too. All right. So I am here in my presentation. I click Rehearse with Coach. So my camera should come on and it's going to, you know, jump up here and it's going to say welcome to presenter coach. As you rehearse, we'll give you feedback about how you're presenting. And then at the end, you'll see a numerical summary and our suggestions. And then you just click start rehearsing. So what you can see here is um, and I apologize for the background. <laughs> this is my guest room slash office and usually I have a 3D, you know, my background on, but today I do not. <laughs> and I, you see those pop-ups, you know, saying don't use um, too many fillers, you know. See, and I've gotten that pop-up again. So now I can start practicing my presentation and I can do things like this. I can say agenda, how to access PowerPoint through office.com, getting started with PowerPoint Live, how your audience can join PowerPoint Live features of PowerPoint Live, it should have popped up and said, hey, don't, you know, don't read your slides um, out loud. I can also go to the next slide and I can say, you know, I can deliver this slide and maybe I'll start talking really fast and people will not be able to understand me and oh my gosh, I can't wait to get onto office.com. It's going to be so great. Can you guys wait? Oh my, oh my, it's going to be so, so great. So there, and there's you guys, right? That might be offensive. Oh, don't look away. You have, you need to face the camera. Did you see that? And, and so I can, you know, work through the coach or work with the coach on my presentation. And then when I'm finished, I can end my presentation. I can stop my session. No, nope, turn that back on. And then you can see I've got this feedback that pops up to show me 
what I need to work on, what was successful in my presentation, and you know how many slides I rehearsed, how much time I spent, how many fillers I used, my average pace, my pitch, and my body language as well. And that's new again. So I kept my gaze forward. Maybe I need to do that some more. See, so look, here's a picture of me facing away from the camera. Here's a picture of me looking at the camera. Um, I kept a clear view of my face and the camera was not you know, too far away. Uh, this it tells me to refine my speech. So I've got two of those, double check um, on that. So you can see that you get this nice feedback and no one else is seeing this but me. And I can take a screenshot of this and share it with, um, you know, with my SLP, I can share it with my teacher, but this is a nice way for me to be able to practice my presentation. Maybe I'm working on some new words um, or you know some new pronunciations. I can use the coach to rehearse those. Um, and then I also can rehearse again if I need to. This gives me, um, when I click learn more, it actually opens to a suggestion for recommendations for not using filler words. So I've got this additional coach outside of the feedback that I've been delivered here. Um, so it's just a great way to, to get in that practice before either um, meeting with you to practice pronunciation of words or um, reading paragraphs, if that's what we're working on, or just um, practice for getting ready to deliver uh, a presentation. So I'm going to pause there and see if you guys can um, think of some ways that this might be useful as speech and language pathologists. And again, come off mute or pop in the chat. Um, Melanie, articulation errors, is that like uh, not pronouncing a word as precisely or maybe skipping over a letter? Yeah, that's that's what I mean by that. Like if they have a W for R or some kind of substitution error, um, if that would pick up and maybe tag it in some way. Um, the fillers part and the pace and the pitch would all be really helpful for fluency students as a practice just to have a paragraph that they'd have to read or a story that they'd have to, a picture that they'd have to describe um, could be really helpful for them to kind of monitor their speech a little bit and something they could even practice at home. Yes. Yeah. That's, those are all really great suggestions. And I think perhaps the speech refinements might pick up on some of those. I know my son gets his V's and his B's and his W's, he's four, um, mixed up. And I wonder if, uh, depending on your microphone, right, um, if it would pick that those up and then put those here in that speech refinement space. Any other ideas? You okay? I'm wondering if as we relate to educational relevant, um, our, our, our participation in that, if um, a student is doing a presentation and that is part of what they need to do, especially as they get a little older, um, this might be really great for them to practice and work on the language aspect of their presentation um, and you know varying their pitch and, and all those kinds of things. So um, you know looking in terms of supporting students in the classroom doing their presentations is my yes. thought. Yep, absolutely, Libby. Yep. yep. 
and and maybe I'm wrong here, but I, as a high school teacher, I always saw um, my speech and language pathology friends as you know, a um, partner in the classroom. So I would often say, okay, hey, we're working on this, um, you know, in English. And Henry has a, a presentation on the Canterbury Tales and he's working on this PowerPoint presentation. Do you think maybe that could be something that y'all look at during one of your sessions? Um, so it's a great way as well, I think, to, you know, like Libby said, to partner with your um uh, <laughs> with your teacher friends uh, and supporting students in the classroom as well. Okay, so while we were doing presenter coach, I did get that, um, that email from the PowerPoint Live, and I do wanna show that to y'all. So here is that feedback from PowerPoint Live, and that comes directly to my email inbox. And I'm just gonna click here to download those pictures so y'all can see what that looks like. All right, so um, three people responded to the feedback request. Um, here is you know, the slide design. Total audience reactions right here. Okay, there were 18 of them. Here they were, and here's my top slide. I think this was the one slide that we used <laughs> to practice those reactions. Um, and I can view more about that um, feedback here. In uh, Microsoft Forms. So this is like the overall view, and then um, I can go to view results and go through each of the different people who gave me feedback. So if you are using PowerPoint Live with some with students who are in your tenant or have to log in, then you are likely going to get names here, so you can see what the feedback is from um, each of the students who were interacting with that presentation. Okay, and that is really all the two things that I wanted to show you guys today, along with, you know, always using subtitles in uh, in your PowerPoint presentations here. So we went over presenting with um, PowerPoint Live and then also rehearsing with a coach. I told you we were going to end a little bit early. <laughs> this was, this has been yeah, really thank helpful. You so much. I'm sorry, Leanne, we were talking at the same time. Go ahead. I apologize, Libby, you go ahead. I just wanted to thank I, Danielle very much for doing this for us. And I appreciate it too. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the, the code um, in the chat box. Um, the certificates won't go out until Tuesday. Um, somebody's responding saying that they love these ideas and thank, thank you. Um, does anybody have questions? This is a good time since we have a little bit of time left if you've got specific questions. And those questions don't have to be about what I just showed you guys. It could be about really anything, honestly, <laughs> inside of Office 365. <laughs> yeah, this is their chance because we do have lots of questions sometimes on how, you know, to to use all those tools and, and you know, make the most of uh, Microsoft. As it relates to the attendance, uh, in order for you to get a certificate, you need to fill out the survey, survey, and there's also a um, place for you to add suggestions or ask any additional questions. And we always forward this information back to the speaker so that um, we can work on, you know, new trainings uh, and things that that you need so this is your chance as i said the the survey will be active until monday at midnight and so the certificates will not go out till tuesday uh, we don't have asha 
CEUs for this presentation, but you can get a professional um, certificate, development certificate, and count it for, for professional development. Any questions? Come on, guys. I know you guys have questions. It's Friday. 